this, today's lesson is about control of the cell cycle. So the cell cycle, as we know, is the life cycle of a cell as it grows and divides. And the question is, how do you regulate this? How is this regulated in the organism? There are things that we've learned about regulating the cell cycle based on what happens to cells in culture. Uh, in in uh, culturing cells in the laboratory, uh, scientists have discovered something called density-dependent inhibition, which, um, which applies when they grow cells in culture. What happens is, is they um, put the cells in the cell medium, uh, in the growth medium, uh, the cells will grow until they form a thin layer of cells and then they'll stop growing <coughs> when they come in contact with other groups of cells. If they remove some of the cells from the middle, they'll start growing again until they, until they reach that point where they come in contact with other cells and they, um, then they'll stop again. And through studying this, scientists have learned that there are chemicals called cyclins, which are protein signals that regulate the cell cycle. This is kind of what happens in the lab. Okay, so you put some cells in the in the culture dish. They'll anchor to the um, to the growth medium, and under the stimulation of of some growth factors uh, to the to the uh, culture, the cells will con will start growing and dividing until they make this single layer of cells, and then they'll stop. They'll just they'll just stop dividing until something happens. If you remove some of the cells again, they will restore that single layer by cell division until they get to that point, and then they'll stop again. And so again, by studying this, scientists have learned about the control some of the controls of the cell cycle. So what they've determined is that there are checkpoints in the cell cycle, and these are control points where there are signals that can regulate the cell cycle. And they've determined that there are three major checkpoints in the cell cycle. Um, the the um, the default uh, point is to stop at the checkpoints unless there's a specific go ahead signal. So, for instance, as the cell is growing and it gets to this G1 checkpoint, you know this is this is like about the surface to volume ratio and about whether what the conditions are that that the cell is in and so forth. It, if there's not a specific signal to turn that off, then the G, then the cell will stay in the G1 or really the G0 phase uh, until until such time as that G1 checkpoint uh, gets the answer yes, go ahead. Uh, when that's to, if it gets the go ahead signal at the G1 checkpoint then it will continue growing and it will enter the S phase where the DNA is replicated and that will continue going until the DNA is replicated and checked to make sure everything's okay and then the G2 phase will happen you know where everything else is prepared and then there's another checkpoint here and again unless everything is just right unless there's a signal to go ahead then everything will stop there and the, and the cell will just stay right there and wait with the duplicated chromosomes. Now, hopefully that's not going to happen very often, but it may happen sometimes. Then when, when it gets the go-ahead to go ahead and enter the M phase in mitosis, there is a checkpoint um, at metaphase or slightly after metaphase. And if, if, um, if everything's not right there, then again, things will stop. And the cell probably at that point will probably die if it's not able to go ahead. So there are a lot of different things that go on, and, and by studying these in, in the laboratory, scientists have learned about some of the signals that occur there. Now, other things that they've learned have to do with things that that stop these checkpoints from behaving. Okay, and that's when you have something like cancer cells. Cancer cells don't respond to the signals. And as a result of those signals, the stop signals that not working then you get something like that's a tumor. A tumor is an overgrowth of cells. And you have two main kinds of tumors. There are benign tumors that stay in their place of origin and don't travel anywhere else. Um, they, they can cause damage where they are, but they don't really um, go to someplace else and cause damage other places. It's just in that location. And then there are malignant tumors. And malignant tumors can break off and spread into other parts of the body. They invade into other areas. They can um, have cells that break off and travel through the bloodstream or the lymphatic system and attach in other locations. Through studying about cancer and how cancer behaves and, some, and about the regulation of the cell cycle that doesn't exist in, um, in cancer, scientists have lear learned that there are a number of different tumor suppressor genes and the main one that is the focus of a lot of research is, is it's called p53 p53 is a tumor suppressor that will basically stop 
the formation of tumors if it's working properly. What they've determined is that in a lot of cancers, the p53 there is a there is a specific mutation in the p53 that causes it not to work properly and therefore it it turns off turns off the off signal basically and lets the cell division go ahead so here's how a tumor suppression gene would work you have a gene here that that produces uh, some kind of protein for a normal growth inhibition and so by do, by suppressing the tumor you end up with cell division that's under control if you have a mutation in that gene, a change in the DNA sequence that causes a different protein to be formed, the, the protein would be non-functioning because it wouldn't be the right size or shape, and therefore it's not going to turn off the cell division like p53 does, and so you'll end up with cell division that's not under control, and that leads to the development of cancer. Now there are a lot of other things to cancer besides that, and there are a lot of different kinds of cancers, but uh, more and more is being learned about these tumor natural tumor suppressors, and a lot of work is being done currently to uh, try to figure out ways to turn p53 back on or to correct those those mutations so that they can stop the tumor in its tracks before it gets started. This concludes the lesson on control of the cell cycle.